Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at some garage sale iPods. Yes, that's right. I picked up these three iPods right here at a garage sale. This is a semi-regular series that we do on this channel, thrift store slash garage sale finds, but we've not done an episode of it in a while. Yeah, like I said, I recently went and I walked away with these three iPods and I ended up paying $30 for all of these, which you might say, okay, what? Well, this doesn't add up to 30 bucks. Well, that's because I found this as well, as the iPod Nano kind of moves over there. Uh, yeah, I picked up a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. This was priced at 25 bucks, which uh, by itself is a really good price for one of these things. But I got all of this right here for 30 bucks. And they sold all this to me for that price uh, because they couldn't confirm if any of this was working. None of this was tested, but I was still willing to pay the asking price, even if uh, it turned out that none of this stuff worked, because I knew that it would make uh, a pretty cool video. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to set the Switch Pro controller aside. We'll come back to that after we finish looking at the iPods here. So let's take a look at what iPods uh, that we got. On the far left here, if you can already tell from the camera, this is a fourth generation iPod Touch. In the center here, this is a second generation iPod Touch. And this right here is a fifth generation iPod Nano, we can tell from the camera on the back. So uh, I found it interesting that the iPod, the two iPod touches were the cost of just the Nano over here. So for some reason they priced this one higher and they're all in great physical condition. Uh, the Nano right here has been housed in this case for what looks like its entire life because if we take it off here, there's like a couple little nicks right there on the bottom. But on the back here, I mean, it looks really pristine. There's a little bit of a uh, dust on it. There was actually a sticker here that I had to uh, take off because it had like some personal info on it. The iPod Touch 2nd Gen has, if you flip it over to the back here, there's a ton of scratches on the back and there's even this what almost looks like paint of some kind, but I do have a magic eraser, a great tool for uh, cleaning, well, pretty much anything. We're going to see if we can get that off. And there we go, it cleaned right up. So this is an 8 gigabyte model. Both of these are 8 gigabyte. And here's the fourth gen right here. We'll take it out of its uh, case here. All right, so here's the fourth and second gen side by side. I went ahead and wiped both of these down with a microfiber cloth right here. And you can see that, yeah, the fourth gen definitely appears to have fewer scratches than the second generation. Without any further ado, Let's go ahead and uh, plug in. Which one do we want to do first? Why don't we start with, uh, let's just start with the iPod Nano. And we're going to get our trusty 30 pin cable right here. And we'll plug it in. Let's see what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if this powers on. It's powering on. And yeah, it absolutely works. So it appears that they have removed a lot of the menu items from the main menu here. If we go into settings here, there is uh, some, some content on here. But to re-enable all the options, you can go into general here and just go to main menu and uh, check all the options that you want on the main menu. Or you can just go to reset settings. And we'll just do that. We'll just reset everything back to uh, factory settings. It's obviously not going to modify the, the actual content that's on here. But uh, yeah, let's, let's go to about and see what we got here. So 1.4 gigs used. We got 1.3 gigs of audio. Everything else is uh, under the other category. 5.9 gigs of free space. And the video camera works great, by the way. Hey, everybody. How's it going? This is a test of the iPod Touch. Uh, iPod Touch, iPod Nano 5th Gen Camera. Let's move on to the iPod Touch 2nd Generation. I'm going to go ahead and remove these uh, stickers right here. This originally shipped with iPhone OS, because that's what it was called back then, version 2.1.1. And uh, if you were an iPod Touch user from this time, you probably remember having to pay to upgrade to the next iPhone OS version, because until iOS 4 came out, which was the first release to officially be called iOS instead of iPhone OS, Apple charged iPod Touch users a fee to upgrade to the next, whatever the next version of iPhone OS was. Uh, not the minor releases, just the major ones. So to go from iPhone OS 2 to 3, for instance, it cost $9.95 if you had an iPod Touch. It was free if you had an iPhone. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and plug this guy in and see... Uh, if it powers on. So we'll plug it in. It's coming on. At least the screen came on. But we have no Apple logo. We have no uh, charging indicator. And now we've got a white screen, a solid white screen. That's really interesting. This looks like it might be bricked. That's my current guess. 
Uh, normally when you plug an iPod in or really any iOS device, even these, these older ones here, oh, just went off. It's supposed to show that little initial charging screen. And that's just to indicate to you that it can't fully power on, it needs to charge up a little bit, right? Well, we're not getting that here. We'll just unplug this one for now and we'll set it aside and we'll just kind of leave it alone for now and we'll move on to the ipod touch fourth gen let me just peel off this sticker here so the ipod touch fourth gen was released in 2010 and it originally shipped with ios 4.1 but it can go all the way up to 6.1.6 which is what my ipod touch fourth gen over here is running so let's hope we have like an older version maybe ios 5 perhaps even ios 4 uh, but let's just plug it in and see what happens. And we are getting that initial charging screen. This is the screen that I was talking about. I'm sure you all are very familiar with this if you've ever owned an iPod Touch or any iOS device before. So we'll just leave this plugged in. We'll let it uh, charge up here. We're just going to set it back there. And while it's doing that, let's go ahead and test out the Switch Pro controller. So I've not, uh, like I said, I've not tested any of this stuff out prior to recording this video. I'm certain this is not going to have any charge whatsoever, but I do have have my Nintendo Switch right here and we'll just set that down here and uh, I found this USB-C cable this is obviously not the original one that shipped with this controller but uh, it's a USB-C cable so you know it will work <laughs> Wow, I, that was a total brain fart. This is a, a USB-C to USB-A cable. That's not gonna work on the Switch. Okay, hang on a second. Let me go grab a USB-C to USB-C. No, it's not here. Well, you're never gonna believe this. I actually don't have a USB-C to USB-C cable. So let me run to the store really quick and grab one and I'll be right back with you guys. A wild Walmart cable appears. Actually a pretty nice quality USB-C to USB-C cable. It's braided. It's got this nice cable wrap on it. Man, okay, so let's go ahead and plug this in. Oh, it's working. Oh man, that's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. A working Nintendo Switch Pro controller for less than 25 bucks. I mean, if you want to say this was 25 bucks and the iPods were five bucks or you know, everything was was 30 bucks, like I said, but still, even for this for 25 bucks, I mean, that's a steal. And let's actually go to controllers here to test everything. So we'll, uh, so let's press L and R, just testing all the buttons here. Yeah, they all seem to, they all seem to be working. We can go home, we can take a screenshot. Uh, yeah, the battery, that, that would be interesting to see uh, how good the battery is in this thing. Even if the battery was like totally shot, I mean, it, having one of these to be able to use wired i mean that's that's still super cool but hey there you go guys that is a working nintendo switch pro controller i've had the uh the ipod touch fourth gen charging for the entirety of my little trip out to walmart and uh let's see if there's a password on this thing we're gonna actually unplug uh this and plug it back into the second gen just so just in case maybe it powers on but my guess is that's that's not going to happen although it did um play the charging sound effect i think it's on yeah oh my gosh yeah i think that the screen because listen to this This could very well be a, a hardware problem, and I do not have the parts to replace, uh, say, if the screen was bad. It could be a bad connection, too. That could certainly be the case. You know what? We're just going to leave it plugged in here in the back. We'll just, we'll just leave it alone for now. But let's see if the iPod Touch 4th Gen has a passcode, the moment of truth. Holy cow, it doesn't. Oh my gosh. And yep, it's running 6.1.6. That is the latest release, so this is fully up to date. Dang it, I was hoping it was going to be running like an older version, because that would be really cool to have like an iOS 5 uh, iPod Touch 4th Gen lying around. There is this stuff folder. That's always great. You've got Game Center voice memos, iTunes, Neon. Neon wallpapers and backgrounds. Okay. Man, remember like the old folder design? Oh my gosh, this really brings me back. Because I, like I said, I used to use this iPod Touch 4th Gen every single day. And we got a favorites folder here. And this looks like there's just a ton of stuff in here. So you've got Terraria. Oh my gosh, Flappy Bird is on here, guys. Holy cow. The value of this thing is one up by like $100,000. Holy crap. I wonder if anyone's still actually selling. Because uh, 
remember? Wow, yeah, you can see how long it's been since I've played this. Um, do you guys remember that phase when, when Flappy Bird got removed from the App Store and there were those people trying to sell uh, iOS devices that had it already installed for like thousands of dollars on eBay? That was so crazy. But uh, yeah, oh my gosh. Okay, well, I'm definitely not gonna be restoring this thing. Oh my gosh, guys. Holy, am I this bad at this? I don't remember being this terrible at this game. Can I get to five here? Okay, you know what? That we're, we're, we're just gonna set it aside. I just can't believe it's got Flappy Bird on it. That's pretty crazy. Um, we've got, oh my gosh, look at that old Instagram logo, the old Snapchat YouTube capture. Oh my gosh, the YouTube capture application. We are on the Wi-Fi, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go to favorites here. Let's go to YouTube. Okay, error loading. That's not a great sign. I mean, you know, there's certainly a possibility this app isn't even going to work anymore. But let's, uh... Okay, we are getting suggestions. It is able to reach out to the internet, but it's just not able to display anything, uh, which isn't too much of a surprise. This is a super old version of the YouTube app. Oh, we got an, an update here. Oh, there's an update to Flappy Bird. The store page will display for me since the app is already installed. But yeah, that is, that is really awesome, guys. So we're gonna set this aside for now. All right, welcome back, everybody. So, yeah, as you can see from the setup we've got on the table, uh, it's been a, a pretty hectic uh, little bit here, however long it's been uh, since the last clip. Um, I was able to get the front panel taken off of the iPod, and unfortunately, I have determined that... Uh, well, first of all, here, let me, just, let me just back up a moment. The first thing that I tried to do to rule out any software issues, which, to be honest, I didn't think this was a software issue because of the fact that, you know, we were able to interact with the iPod, we were able to slide to unlock, and it was, you know, playing the sound effect, we were able to lock it, we were able to do everything that you are normally able to do, just the screen wasn't working. So I, I was certain that it was a hardware issue, but just to rule out software entirely, I did a complete factory restore, and that uh, didn't do anything. So then I ended up taking off the front panel. Right here, this connector on the bottom is where the LCD connects to the logic board, or or the motherboard, whatever you want to say. And if we check this connection, it's totally fine. I can fully disconnect it from the board. And now you see if I press the lock button, nothing's going to happen. I can uh, reconnect it to the board. I can make sure that it's, you know, as, as secure as a connection can be. And we get the exact uh, same result. We get that solid white screen. So this indicates that either there is a problem with the LCD itself or perhaps the cable that's underneath. Uh, there's actually, um, you have to remove the, yeah, this, I, I could probably go like an entire video explaining all this and showing you all the footage uh, would probably make this video way too long. So I just decided to sum everything up here. Now the LCD itself, I've already started to separate it from the metal piece beneath it so it comes up pretty easily now but uh, yeah it just lifts up like that there's this metal piece right underneath it there and the cable runs underneath that but uh, you know it's all one piece at least I believe that the part actually I can just look on iFixit here if they actually still have I, I wonder if they still sell this part oh yeah they have it iPod touch second gen LCD is 20 bucks and yeah so you can see that the cable is a part of it here so uh, I, I could buy this and try to replace it perhaps that's a topic for another video but uh, I have a lot of projects that I'm working through right now, and I think this will just be set on the project shelf for now, but hey, two out of three, that's pretty awesome. The Switch Pro Controller is a pretty awesome find in and of itself, and if I had to pay 30 bucks just for this, that would be awesome too. But uh, yeah, guys, there you have it. That is, uh, that, that wraps up this episode of Garage Sale Finds. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.